Uh, Jamie? <laughs> I'm Amanda. You just hurt her damn feelings. Go home and calm the down. You bye. 1,000 Pound Sisters are back for the fifth season, but Tammy is less fat, Amy gained weight, lost a husband, and all the family members are jumping on the weight loss surgery bandwagon. Hello, and welcome back to another fat chick video, except Tammy is not so fat anymore. Uh, if you're new here, welcome. I'm sure that was a thing for you. I'm Michelle, I break down internet drama, reality TV shows, celebrities, reality shows with celebrities that cause internet drama, and I break that all down, condense it all in a 20 to 30 minute video so you don't have to scroll and rot your brain on the evil internet. Okay, let me do it for you. I do this all for you. I am such a good person. So please hit the subscribe button. My goal is to get to 800,000 and I'm almost there and I don't think I can do it without you. I keep asking for suggestions of how I could do that without you that are authentic, but no one's given me a solution yet. So that's the only way I can get there is to nicely ask, please, can you spare a, a can you just hit the subscribe button? Thank you. All right, let's break down 1,000 Pound Sisters episode one. So it's been two months since Tammy got married to Caleb in the show. They sleep in the same room. Ooh, spicy. But not in the same bed. I don't even think they, like, yet. But they won't let us sleep in the same bed for safety reasons. We can probably put two and two together as to, you know, why they cannot or even sleep in the same bed. It will probably break and that's not a joke. It would be way too easy of a joke. That's just reality. This is definitely a clinic for people who are morbidly obese. So obviously the beds can hold one of them, but I don't know if they plan to hold two of them. I think in most of these places, they aren't even supposed to be hooking up. I don't even really know if they can hook up, like if it's possible. So I don't think the facilities really plan for all that. But Caleb makes sure to let Tammy know they gonna be getting down. Remember, I told you, you got a ride coming. A ride coming? 100% full speed. You look exhausted, just think about riding. Yeah, Caleb died a few months later. Once again, that is not a joke. This man died. It is extremely sad, we talked about it on this show, but Tammy never got her ride, and I'm upset by that. She never got to get on the bus and get taken to another world. I mean, he made it sound like it was gonna be an amazing thing. Especially because Tammy really thought that she had found her special person, something special with Caleb. I mean, if I fart in front of him, that says a lot. <laughs> I'll burp in front of you all day long, but to pass gas? That's practical. You know they are the one when you can pass gas and they don't leave the room, mostly because they physically can't leave the room and it hurts them to even get up, so. But they probably both fart a lot, maybe. I'm not exactly sure what they are feeding them. And once again, this is not a fat person fart lot joke. It's a, I've seen what Tammy eats. These people don't have the best of diets and I can kind of put two and two together on the type of food that they're eating, which is going to create a lot of certain things that happen in the stomach. And depending on the food that you eat, it can make the air that comes out of your butt cheeks smell even worse. That's a scientific fact. And if you have those type of smells coming out of your butt and your person doesn't leave the room, I think you found love or someone that lost their sense of smell. I'm not too sure. Either way, match made in heaven. And these two felt that they were. Caleb actually researched Tammy before he met her, found that she was at this specific rehabilitation center, got his butt cheeks transported to this one, wooed and swooed Tammy, and hooked her in. Some call it stalking. Other people also call it stalking. Caleb calls it real love. In my opinion, we're the kind of couple that makes people sick. <laughs> So Caleb and Tammy are doing absolutely everything together, including working out. Hey, not that type of working out, you sick, nasty animal. This is a family friendly show. It's not. But they're like working out together, moving with their clothes on separately. You know the plan, no days off, let's hit the gym. Oh my gosh, imagine them both losing a mass amount of weight and both become the fitness IG couple doing the most obnoxious post on Instagram that I quickly scroll away from. The fight is in me, I'm a Leo after all. See, Tammy's got that, that fitness itch. Everything is going so well. The only thing Tammy needs or the couple needs is to get the okay from Caleb's doctor to get him to go home with Tammy so that their love story can continue on. Well, they're not gonna approve me to go home. I mean, we know how this all ends. So let's just go to 
something happier, like Amy and her family that are happy together. After Glenn was born, Michael didn't help much. I had to learn how to deal with one baby make a bottle and hold a different baby at the same time. We also know how this ends. Divorce and a new man. A black man. Shut up, people who say, I don't know this color, I do. And you know Michael is just <laughs> Punch in air. All you had to do, sir, was hold the baby while your wife ate her food. But you had to sit there in the corner eating your pork ribs and cornbread at Little Bit's funeral while your kids ran and screamed and your wife looked flustered and upset. And thank goodness for us, you know we're all nosy and toxic. We like the drama not to be in it. And now we get to watch a family break apart and experience the downfall every single week at 9 p.m. on Sundays. This is not what I pictured when I signed up to be a mother. a lot of people, so like for example, I got curious and asked my mother, who's now divorced, for the same reasons that Tammy is divorced. She felt like that she, well, she didn't feel. She wasn't. I was a kid while she was not getting any help, any support, except financially from my dad, because my dad is a very traditional person. Phew. Oh great, you're home. Now you can help me with the baby. Oh gee, SpongeBob, I'd love to, but I'd totally beat the work. So I asked my mom, because, you know, I'm nosy. So I just, you know, ring, ring, called up my mom one day, because I was so curious. I was like, what? Like, when you looked at dad, that just dad being dad, like, what part of dad made you think, yep, involved father? He's definitely gonna wipe some ass of a child when we have kids. He's definitely gonna chase around children. He's gonna dress up with his daughters as a princess. He's gonna hold the baby while I pump my tits for milk so the baby can feed. And you know what my mom said? Well, I asked if he wanted kids and he said, yeah. I spit out my almond milk when she gave me that answer and the roles reversed. Now it was the daughter talking to the mom about picking husbands and picking men to entertain. That's what qualifies him to have access to your womb. So you had the chance of having your vagina and butthole ripped open for that. That's all it took. And then she told me to shut the hell up. But I can say it here. Can't stop me, mama. No, but I hear a lot of women, a lot of my friends, or not a lot, a few friends, and just people on TikTok, like all these just women in general, say, well, he said he wanted kids. Ladies, you better question the hell out of those men. Just wanting kids is not enough for me. Every guy I've ever been with said that he wanted kids. And then I would ask why. And you know what the ongoing answer was for most of these men? Kids are fun. One man took it a step further from this, the Tourette's guy that I talked about in that story time, he said, you just wrestle with them. Then I asked these same men, when have you ever been around kids where all you do is just wrestle? Most of them hung around kids for a little bit at family functions where kids are very fun. Anyway, this just is a topic that I'm very passionate about. I think if you are a woman who wants an involved father and you have a chance to interrogate that man and see how he is around children, you should probably do it. And if you are a man who wants children or thinks he wants children and your reasoning is because kids are fun, you might want to just be around some kids. <laughs> No! Yes! No! Yes! Because you'll figure out pretty quickly they can be fun, but at other times they can also be soul-sucking little demons that eat crackers while doing it. <laughs> Woo, okay, we just had a really long pep talk, okay? Uh, I just like people that watch me to be very aware of what you're signing up for. So ladies, you don't end up like Amy. Every aspect of my life is chaotic because I have no support. And men, you don't end up looking like Michael, wandering around a room looking like Patrick, trying to find his candy bar that he already ate. No, I'm gonna starve. While the volcano in your wife's gut is about to erupt. I don't know, just a thought before you make everlasting decisions. Back to the show. So Chris, Amanda, and Misty are prepping for Tammy's arrival. After 14 months, I am so excited that Tammy is finally coming home. At least Queen Tammy's getting to come home to her own personal redneck castle. The whole family is super excited. They're getting everything perfect. They even got Tammy a nice new bed. They got her a hefty ramp. Ooh, my ears. Damn. Do you got directions or are you just winging it? They'll be fine. They'll buff out the scratches later and get it all perfect for her. I mean, how else is she gonna get up the stairs? The ramp is like a, a it, she needs the ramp. So make it work, Slayton family. He's winging it. You know, with Tammy coming home, we gotta have a ramp sturdy enough 
to hold Tammy's weight. So the ramp is the least of the family's worries. The biggest worry is Tammy, you know, once she gets back home and out of that controlled environment, is she going to quickly go back to her old eating habits of eating whole pans of lasagna. Well, when they're on the topic of Tammy and her, you know, whole ramp trauma, the sisters tell Chris that they're all just gonna get weight loss surgery. One last appointment that we have to go see him with and then final and approval then we, is all we're waiting on. And then we can schedule the surgery. In fact, Amanda already had weight loss surgery. Gastric bypass, but since then, I have made some bad choices and I've put on some pounds. So I'm looking to have a revision to help combat the weight gain. All right, so I don't know much about weight loss surgery. So before I speak out of these butt cheeks, let's just look it up. Gastric revision surgery is surgery that is performed after a previous weight loss surgery. If you had previous weight loss surgery, you might be a candidate for gastric revision surgery. If you're having problems related to that surgery, such as recurrent vomiting and abdominal pain. So I looked up a few other things, you know, patients can lose even more weight if they get the revision surgery. And I'm, I'm gonna slightly speak out of my butt cheeks here. I don't really like looking up surgery. It makes me really grossed out and sometimes they just put surprise images and I don't want to see it. I only look up drama for you guys, not surgery shit. Like that's, I don't want to see that. But correct me if I'm wrong. These are just my thoughts. Amanda, if you gained weight and made horrible choices that made you gain weight, why wouldn't she just work on not making those choices and then lose the weight? Why do you have to go to the surgery? I don't know exactly how to say it. Like, I've gained some weight. I'd like to have a revision. How about you ask a fat? You know, I don't know. Like, why get the revision if you already know the issue? Just stop making those decisions. I'm more of a social smoker, but Misty has been smoking almost as long as I've been alive. Not only are these people, or these two specifically, are obese, but they smoke as well. They have pounds of fat over the lungs, over the kidneys, and then you pump smoke into your lungs at the same, like that's wild to me. But they're, they're also changing it. It's just crazy to think of. We just spoke about the woman. She did lose weight. She was trying to lose more weight. She was obese for a while, but she was in the body positive community as well. And she died in the Chick-fil-A parking lot due to obesity issues, obesity related problems. And so whenever I see people like Tammy and the sisters who are smoking and obese, especially Tammy though when she was at her biggest, I'm just like, how are these people alive? How are they living? How did this woman, the woman who died in the Chick-fil-A parking lot, drop dead when she lost weight? She's not even close to being as big as Tammy. And Tammy was living for years, like I just, I don't, you know what though? Tammy's around my age, parking lot chick in her 40s. That's pretty eye-opening. Do you think Tammy was gonna make it to like 45? I ain't gonna answer it. Y'all answer it. But they're working on it and soon everyone will be having the surgery and be eating less and saving a lot of money. The family dinners just got cheaper. So Chris is gonna be getting skin removal surgery because he has lost so much weight. And hopefully he gives me the okay for skin removal surgery. So big things are happening in our family. And over here, we are extremely proud of Chris. He's still my favorite character. He still has the best smile out of everyone. He's just this cute big teddy bear that I am just rooting for. So it's time for Tammy to come home and Chris and his wife go pick up the old girl. And once they get there, she rolls on out. Look at you. A bit. Heartwarming, isn't it? So the last time Chris brought her for a checkup, she was around like 700 pounds. Couldn't hold herself up. Now look at her. She can actually stand up and get Give her brother a big ol' hug, right? Okay, clap everyone. Everyone get the heck up and clap. Get, get your ass up. Clap your hands, yeah. Every, she needs this, she needs this. But the mood soon changes because she has to leave and that means she has to say goodbye to Caleb who then reads her a sentimental poem about sunflowers. Sunflower, sunflower. In fields full of green. Representing the light. That you have breathed. Yeah, once again, we're gonna skip to a happier part. And, you know, Caleb walks, I mean, rolls down the hallway of the rehabilitation center to send Tammy off. And you know how Tammy rolled into the rehabilitation center? Well, now she walked out. Get up. 
get up and keep clapping. Put your hands together and clap them. We absolutely have to keep doing this and pumping her up because we were very hard on Tammy on this channel, right? We dressed up, we talked our shit, we were irritated. She really had our bloods boiling just seeing her resist, people telling her not to die, just being a whole ass fool. And now she is not being a fool. She's working hard. We have to go just as hard for Tammy. Those are some huge steps, literally. Like, it's amazing to see what she was like two years ago. Got up out of the wheelchair and walked straight out the facility. And that's the most I've seen her really walk in three years. And get this, she gets in the seat. Like, first of all, she gets in the car and she sits on a seat. Wait, 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 I'm not done. They didn't have to put the seat down like they used to and have her sit in her butt cheeks on the floor, being thrown around, crying, getting hurt, mad and frustrated, dignity gone. Oh, oh. Oh, ah. Tammy. Ah. Imagine not being able to sit in a car chair. You have to be on the floor like an animal. I'm in a chair. In the bed. <laughs> It took me a minute to get over here, but I'm in. I did it. So the three sisters are waiting for Tammy to arrive. They're decorating the ramp to make her feel special when she arrives at home. Amy though is extremely just stressed out because uh, most of the work falls on her. Even though I'm excited to see her, when am I gonna have time to do everything I'm gonna need to do? I got my mom, I got my boys, I got my husband. I just got too much going on. But at the same time, she says that she will take all of that work, all of that stress because she loves her sister and she's extremely excited to see her. I will take all that stuff just to see my sister again. Now that is very sweet. I wonder how long they will go until they start fighting. I don't, what? Amanda, you just hurt her damn feelings. About two minutes showtime. <laughs> so what happened here? It all started with Tammy, but not the way that you think. Tammy got a little upset that no one noticed that she didn't have her trach in her throat anymore. Nobody's mentioned the trach? Oh. This is the first time my family seen me without a trach. In person. And them bitches didn't even say anything. So then she requested that they touch the hole and people were like, Ugh. but Amanda ends up filling up Tammy's hole. Oh, that's weird. I swear to Sky Daddy himself, if any one of you got that thing out of their throat and asked me to, to, to touch their hole, don't you ever come around me again, okay? I understand it's an accomplishment. Absolutely, great job, but absolutely not as well. I would be aiming in this situation because she can't even look at it. He's being a wussy, she can't even look at it. Because she can't look at it, Amy makes fun of her eye. The good eye was looking at Chris. And that was the joke that set her off. And you might be saying that's a little dramatic, and it kind of is, but also we have to think about this. Through the day, Amy has been stressing over the fact that she's going to have to take care of her sister, husband, kids. And while she's thinking about that, at the house when her sister arrives, her kids are running around everywhere. They're pulling on Tammy's nose thing. Hey! Using Tammy's walker as a play car. Gage, don't run over anybody. <laughs> Amy keeps telling the baby no and it's not listening. Well, you boys hey, Gage, be careful. Hi, Gage. And Michael is doing absolutely nothing. He's just eating again. Michael ain't doing He's just sitting there looking like boo boo. Ooh. And now after all of that all day, people are making fun of her eye and she loses it. She's crying, she's having a panic attack, and then Amanda comes in and yells at her some more. I can't even be in a room without getting made fun of. <laughs> Stay in here, she's, uh, she's hot. Stay in okay, here. Okay, that's fine. It's not my first rodeo. I'm so sick of getting hey, made fun of. I, you. No, that's bull. You know, we all have those days where we are just stressed, tired, and pissed. And then someone has to make fun of what you look like and you take it a little harder than normal. And they seem like a family that jokes around very similar to my family. But if you're having a stressful and hard, bad day and you walk to the pit of a family that plays too damn much, well, you end up, you know, in this type of situation. I think Amy's a little stressed out about the whole situation just because She's got a full, pretty damn full plate without Tammy coming home. I just have one question. Why does everything fall so much on Amy? Tammy is living at Amanda's house and it still falls on Amy. Amanda and Chris have grown kids, but it still falls on Amy who has two very small kids and a Patrick. <clears throat> Patrick, I really need my- 
tomorrow for sure. Why Amy? Just wondering. I mean, I it's it's great for us once again. I watch for the drama. Go home and calm the down. You bye. But if I was in this situation, I would have acted worse than Amy did. I, if I was surrounded by people who were doing the minimal amount of work and I was doing the maximum and they started making fun of my eyes. Who through it all, you know who was the most calm? Tammy. Welcome home, Tammy, have you missed that? Well, that was episode one, and I'm sure we have an action-packed, heart-filled, heartwarming season, and I can't wait to bring it to you. That's pretty cool. So if you're interested in that, make sure to hit the subscribe button. Remember, you don't have to be a size two. Having big biceps is great to have, but not needed to be healthy, but health is extremely important. And I would love for you guys, even the people that absolutely hate me, to be as healthy as possible. Once again, thank you guys so much for watching, especially if you got to the end of this video. I know it's really long, but I have a lot to say, and I love talking to you guys, but you guys have a Great day. Be good, and I'll see you guys next time. Pick it up, pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. Ooh. You see the drip, yeah, I fit it up. Hop in my car and the giddy up. Secure the bag, yeah, I get the bus. Pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. You see the drip, yeah, I fit it up. Hop in my car and the giddy up. Secure the bag, yeah, I get the bus. Pick it up, pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. Ooh. I've been on the flex since flex on. Neighborhood all in your eardrums.